you know, it's never been my focus to be the guy in front of the camera. I have always just wanted to tell good stories, shed positive light on the hunting community, and just live through these fantastic adventures. I'm gathered up, I'm headed to New Mexico, 15 hours one way, it's worth every ounce of driving. Don't pass up those opportunities because you never know when it's the last day for you. Welcome to New Mexico. This is my very first chance to hunt New Mexico by myself solo. Actually me doing the hunting, not doing the filming. This is a beautiful state. I'm out here in what the landowners refer to as cattle country and I would refer to as flat antelope country. Uh, I have hunted antelope my whole life uh, in Wyoming and I know their mannerisms, I know what they like. It's the same animal here, but the topography is quite a bit different. It looks to me like it's just grass and greasewood and a little bit of cactus mixed in. So I'm not looking for a giant, right? It's uh, the day before the hunt, it's around noon, and I'm gonna be planning on going home about this time tomorrow with a filled tag. Uh, hang in there with me. You can be very, very effective not being hurried, and that's what I'm doing here today. So I'm using the Onyx exclusively because there's a little bit of state land scattered in here. There's the neighbor's property that comes into him. So I have to be very careful because with a landowner tag in the state of New Mexico, I cannot hunt an antelope on public land. It's a big no-no. So I want to make sure I'm playing all the, uh, make, make sure I'm, I'm abiding by the rules, all right? It's, it, that's uh, priority number one for me. So I'm gonna take a pair of 15 Swarovskis, I'm gonna put them on a tripod, and then I'm just gonna start picking everything apart. What I want to do today is just find pockets of antelope, find where they're watering. Holy cow, there's a goat right there. I'm going to cut this, I'm going to spin around, and we'll see if this is a buck. Just a single note. Kind of what, something I've always thought was in comparison to the antelope we have in Wyoming, they're quite a bit bigger body than these. These have always seemed a little bit slender, probably the, the heat. I'm sitting near kind of like, like a dump pile for the ranch and there's a little bit of water in here and I, I'm thinking she's trying to get to this water. Antelope hunting in my opinion is about as fun as it comes. So there's a gate right here. There's three antelope on the other side of that gate, which I think is the neighbors. Everything's on its feet. So I'm just gonna keep moving real easy, glassing, learning the area. That's four antelope. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, this particular property hasn't had hardly any antelope on it over the last couple of years, and they just kind of made it to here. So um, it's exciting. Traveling out across here, I got four more goats that are right on the edge of public, and then the landowner. And this particular antelope right here is a plus size antelope. This is the reason you would hunt New Mexico for antelope. So I'm just gonna ease up, see how close he is to me in the boundary, see if I can identify the boundary. Uh, I got a little footage of him, you can look at it now. And it's just a dandy, just a super nice, super nice antelope. Big water hole over here to my right. Makes all the sense in the world. They're in that uh, chest high greasewood. Antelope hunting, fantastic. And then look at this antelope from the front. You just drive on by him, no big deal. He turns sideways and you get to see what he's made of. That's the key to antelope. Make sure you look at all sides. That's coming from the somebody that's made the mistake way too many times. He's got four girls with him. He's heavy, he's nice. I'd say, uh, and he's literally the road. He's standing on the road between the two properties. So we'll just know where he's at. I'd be happy with him any day. Thank God for all that cloud cover because now it's only 103. So I'm fast learning the frustration with this hunt is the private land, public land, ruling and laws. These antelope, the ones I found, I just found an antelope right there. It's for sure 83, 84, I'll give you a look at him. Uh, it's a really big antelope. And the ranch I'm on, he's off it, so I can't really pursue him 
currently, but I think he's been living in this general area. So um, you just gotta watch your maps, man, and, uh, and pray these antelope mess up. It's a big antelope. It's just nice to see the two bucks that I've seen are both exceptional in this country. Which is exactly what I know about New Mexico. All right, I've hunted all day. And the best antelope on the property that I can find right now is 500 yards straight up the road from me, feeding with some does. Uh, he's pretty comfortable with the truck. And so I'm going to let it sit here. So many people get caught up in the, oh man, you're hunting from the truck and all that stuff. Listen to me. That's a stigmatism that's crazy. So there's nothing more threatening to these animals than a human walking around. This is a cattle ranch. They're used to seeing trucks go. It's non-invasive, non-threatening, and it's the one thing that keeps them at ease. Now, you're not hunting from the truck, like shooting from the truck, but you gotta use that vehicle to your advantage. So I'm gonna park right here. I'm gonna camp right here, and I want them to be comfortable with this vehicle. Hopefully I can locate them in the morning, get up, get on them, and get a shot. If I can't, then I'm gonna reuse my vehicle to get them located. <clears throat> something I'm not a big fan of is the like the gear dump and all that stuff I just it doesn't define me what you have what you use but there's so many requests for it, people who are interested that I thought I would just go through what I take with me on every hunt if I'm filming if I'm hunting it looks like a lot but remember you're not using it all at the same time you're only using some at once so the wind's kind of blowing I'm just gonna do this on my iPhone so you can see everything, and then I'll show you kind of what I use. First things first, I swear by these Kinetrek boots. There's a set right there, and there's a brand new set right there. I always have two sets with me. I'm a diehard Yeti guy. Most of you know this from the films. This is the uh, heavy duty Panga bag, I think it's, the, yeah, I had to get that name right. You can see how much dust is in here, so all my sleeping stuff is in there. And then I'm always toting enough coolers to bring home meat and whatnot drinks. I always take with me this original set of 10 by 42 SLCs from Swarovski. I use them as a loaner pair or a backup. And then I'm running the EL 1042 ranges. I'm running a set of SLC 15s that are run on the tripod. I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, I'm running the big 95 spotting scope. I'm running a Canon S200 with the APO adapter on it. So this literally slides onto this camera. That's just the lens that comes with the S200. I'll um, show you in a minute where I keep that on my bino bra. Macro lens, kit lens. This is my zoom lens. So most kill shots, most long range anything, I'm using this Tamron. Uh, I think it's a 150 to 600 on a Canon EOS R. 4K mirrorless camera. There's a new generation of this, but this one for me, it's just right and I have no need to upgrade. I run identical Swarovski carbon tripods with Manfrotto heads. I, very few people that I know have not converted to this fluid head. So I have identical mounts with a camera, big lenses, binos, spotting scopes. Everything's attached and everything's interchangeable and I keep everything in a Yeti loadout box. So I have everything from zippers to tenacious tape to some security stuff, emergency stuff. I keep chargers, batteries, this vinyl harness, all my camera stuff, and everything you see here goes in this box with me on every hunt. The only other thing I didn't take out of the package, but this is a set of Rode mics. This is the uh, Lav Pro. They're Bluetooth mics, and I use those for um, you know, once we've got something on the ground, we want to do a little bit of recovery for the hunter. I'll mic everybody up and put those on. Otherwise, this is my rolling hunt rig, everyday rig, sales rig. Uh, and for what it's worth, this is my favorite bino bra to date. I know they call it a bino harness, but my good friend Jay Lesser one time nicknamed it a bino bra and I can't call it anything else. So I'm running that one and then I'm running one on my chest right here. Can you see that? And this camera clips into here, so it can't come out, but it can like that. That's just a makeshift item, so I can tote around a camera as a backup. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The 
This is what it looks like. This is behind the scenes when you're watching a hunt. Those antelope are against the fence. This corner right here, this corner right here is all me. This is uh, public land over there, public land beyond me. This is where I'm gonna spend the night. And those goats are back there, about 700 yards milling around, trying to lay down. So hopefully, the sun will come up over there tomorrow. Well, that part will happen. And then I'll be able to uh, slip in, find them either bedded or just getting up and get a couple hundred yard shot. I know you're gonna watch this after the fact, but please wish me luck. You should be thinking all the time, oh, I hope that white bone guy gets lucky this fall. You should be thinking that. And I think, oh man, I hope they love this film. I hope I don't screw up, but if I do, I still hope they love the film. Very typical. They weren't where I left them last night, so walked down there and took a look. Nobody's there, so let's, uh, let's, let's get on the truck, start driving, see if we can find them. It took me all morning to find those, uh, those goats, and I did and they are about 150 yards onto BLM land. Easy shot, nobody would ever know. I could just wrap her up, no big deal. But I just can't do it. So I'm gonna let them feed around and just pray that they work their way back to where they were the last couple days. This is, a, this is just a dream antelope. I've. I've been very fortunate and hunted a lot of antelope. Um, big one, small one, it really don't matter. They just get exciting when they're that size. And uh, But my message here is do the right thing. It'll pay off. I mean, it, it, look, if, even if I don't get a shot, I got a very close friend that's coming up next uh, in two weeks and he'll be around. Um, check your regs. Um, read this part about the BLM and um, a landowner tag in New Mexico and then call your landowner and get some coordinates and look at it. This place I'm hunting uh, was kind of advertised to 17,000 acres. Yeah, I'll bet you 15,000 of it is BLM. And yes, he has some land on it, but no, no. Do the right thing. I wish there was a better way to film this hunt. I glassed up from a really long ways away, a young, great big buck. He's beautiful, he doesn't finish well, meaning he doesn't have big hooks, but he's but he's tall, he's full, mature antelope, beautiful, beautiful buck. He's looking at a bunch of does that are up here. The does are on the stuff I can hunt on, the buck is not, so I'm gonna try and just get him positioned. This is the weird jockey game. He's just working his way over. It's the middle of the day. It's 104 degrees right now. And these box and does are just kind of turned on. So I'm just gonna try and sit does waiting for this buck. Wish me luck. For the next two hours, everything got very, very real. I quit recording, quit doing anything but watching that map and watching those boundaries. Somehow I got between those does and that buck and all I had to do was let him slip up. At 200 yards, he stepped onto us about 40 yards and I leveled off and the rest is in the history books. Man, it is so hot and I cannot get a good photo of him because I'm playing the timer guy. So I'm just gonna rotate him like this so y'all can see him and I'll freeze frame it and use that as a trophy shot. Just a beautiful, everything a guy could ever ask for in New Mexico. It took me forever to let him slip up and to step on the right piece. Grateful, man. Super, super grateful. 
hunting solo is some kind of special. For me, it becomes my church, a place where my thoughts and my dreams are just free to wander. Even in those times of hyper-focus, right before it's all gonna happen, I'm at ease. Man, it's hot. <laughs> it is so freaking hot. Uh, it was so hot, I couldn't, it was just not the time to be filming. Uh, I was trying to hurry, not get that meat messed up. The antelope is completely quarter deboned in the cooler. Oh, I only took three photos. You can see the recovery footage and uh, tags on, everything's good. I'm headed home, 15 hour drive. Let's go, thank you for watching. If you would please uh, remove your hat, I'd like to close in prayer. Lord, thank you for giving me opportunity. Thank you for teaching me to grab a hold and take advantage of these times. And thank you so much for giving me a voice to encourage others to live this incredible life. And in your name we pray. Amen.